Handy Games recently brought their Demolition Derby themed racing game Wreckfest to Apple TV. Today we are going to have a deep dive into the Apple TV version. Even though Wreckfest is a fairly old game and is just a racer, I'd still class it as AAA and the most graphically advanced game to ever hit Apple TV. Sure, we've had some notable console type games on Apple TV, especially thanks to Apple Arcade in particular, such as Gear Club Stradale, NBA 2K23 Arcade Edition, or Ocean Horn 2. And yes, there are some cool games on the App Store too, from Titan Quest Legendary Edition, Beach Buggy Racing 2, Inside, or the brilliant Dead Cells. Despite some cool game releases on Apple TV, Apple have never really marketed Apple TV as a platform to game on, or for serious gaming experiences. I would say most of the general public and developers are not even aware that Apple TV has games on it. It's typically known for streaming shows and movies, such as the excellent new Tetris movie on Apple TV+. Wreckfest is the first game to show the real gaming potential of the powerful GPUs inside Apple TV. Well, the last two models anyway. Wreckfest is available to download on every modern Apple TV. Just like Wreckfest on iPhone and iPad, the Apple TV version only requires up to 1.3 gigabyte of RAM. This means it can somewhat work on the Apple TV HD, which has only two gigabyte of built-in memory. It's also powered by Molten VK, just like the iPhone and iPad version. I believe this is the first game on Apple TV to support Molten VK, but I have no way of confirming this. The game is not playable with the Siri remote, and that is a good thing. However, like almost every game on tvOS, Wreckfest has full controller support and controller rumble support on Apple TV too. For example, you'll feel your controller vibrate during crashes or when your vehicle lands from a great distance. It would have been good if your controller vibrated when going over different surfaces like gravel or dirt, and I wish adaptive trigger support was here on DualSense controllers, but I'm still happy that we have some sort of rumble vibration here. Unlike the console version, Wreckfest on Apple TV has a major graphical customization options. These settings are available on the iPhone and iPad version too. Most importantly, you can change the screen scaling on Apple TV. Screen scaling lowers down the internal resolution, but it depends on the output display. For example, if you have a 4K display, 3840 by 2160, it will be the following. Extreme, 3187 by 1792, 83%. Ultra, 2572 by 1447, 67%. High, 1920 by 1080. 50% and low, 1536 by 864, 40%. It goes on further. The dynamic resolution option can further scale down these resolutions too. There are three settings available to try. Quality, no further scaling will be applied. Balance, additional scaling between 80 and 100% depending on frame rate. Performance, additional scaling between 50 and 80% depending on frame rate. Now let's look at the performance of Wreckfest on all supported Apple TVs. First is the new Apple TV 4K 3rd Gen, powered by the A15 Bionic. By default, the game will run at mostly high settings, with shadow quality and medium, a 30 FPS limit, and dynamic resolution is switched to quality. You can see the default settings on screen now. Default settings are the same on every Apple TV. At this state, the game is running at 1920 by 1080 resolution, thanks to screen scaling being switched to high, 50% scaling. In this state, the game hits 30 FPS, 
sometimes going down to 27 FPS. However, there is also some occasional problems with uneven frame pacing. Default settings are, are mostly okay, and most will enjoy the game like this. However, you can obviously go well above these settings. Let's try the game at the highest graphical settings. You can see what these settings are on screen now. In this state, the game is running near 4K at 3187 by 1792, 83% scaling. In this state, the game sees about 20 to 30 FPS. It will never hit the 60 FPS target, obviously. It's having the biggest issues during big crashes, and this happens often in this game. In my opinion, playing the game at max settings here isn't advised at near 4K. The machine just isn't powerful enough. That being said, it's still pretty cool that it's at least somewhat playable at such a high resolution. This is where dynamic resolution comes into play. As I said before, dynamic resolution will automatically scale down the internal resolution when it cannot reach the set FPS limit. 60 FPS just isn't possible at max settings but 30 FPS is. If we put dynamic resolution to performance, an additional scaling between 50 and 80% depending on the frame rate will be applied. Now you'll hit 30 FPS more frequently, but we'll still experience some dips into low 20s during big crashes. But the average FPS will be a lot, lot closer to 30 FPS now. If you want a locked 30 FPS, play at high screen scaling, which is 1080p. Then play at mostly high settings for everything else. You can see these settings on screen now. The game still looks great, and 30 FPS is totally playable for this game, in my opinion, especially if you've played this game on PS4 or Xbox One. So what if you want a locked 60 FPS on this Apple TV. This is where you're going to run into trouble. The new Apple TV does not have a fan, and this game unfortunately makes this new Apple TV thermal throttle hard. This means a completely locked 60 FPS isn't possible. Even at the lowest settings, it will still drop frames. I thought dynamic resolution at performance might improve things, but it made almost no difference. It added about three to five frames on some occasions, and sometimes it did nothing. No matter the graphical settings applied, the game will never hit a locked 60 FPS and will drop down to 30 FPS often due to thermal throttling. It's very unfortunate that a locked 60 FPS is not possible here, but I'm going to put this down to Apple not including a fan in this device, and not on handy games. Now let's take a look at the second gen Apple TV with the A12 Bionic chip. By default the game will run at exactly the same settings as every other Apple TV. You can see the settings on screen now. Just like the latest Apple TV, it sticks to the 30 FPS target, but will drop down to 29 or 27 FPS sometimes during those challenging scenes. Poor frame pacing is still here too. Honestly, poor frame pacing is a very common problem on every Apple platform, so I'm not super surprised. Playing at max graphics and a high screen scaling is not ideal on this machine, you'll always receive below 30 FPS, so it's not playable, but I thought it would be interesting just to test it. Lowering the graphics to about medium does not help with performance in any way at this state, so playing at this very high resolution is just not possible with the A12 chip. 
Even at ultra screen scaling, which is a resolution of 2572 by 1447, and medium settings, the FPS is about 25 to 30 FPS. It's definitely more playable, sure, but I think it makes more sense to play at a lower resolution, as this is just not that enjoyable. If you want to play at reasonably high settings with 30 FPS, use my on screen settings now. You'll be playing at 1080p and mostly high settings and dynamic resolution will be put to performance, which as I said before, an additional screen scaling between 50 and 80% will be going on depending on the frame rate. So now you'll hit 30 FPS. I still struggled to get the game to hit a locked 60 FPS on this device. It's definitely worth lowering the screen scaling to low, which is 1536 by 864, still a reasonably high resolution, and max graphics, and it actually does pretty well. It sees about 50 to 60 FPS. This is my preferred state to play the game in for a high FPS. At high screen scaling, again 1080p and medium settings, it would not hit a locked 60 FPS still. If you want closer to a locked 60 FPS, your best option is to enable a dynamic res of performance and you'll hit 60 FPS more frequently. But again, it's not locked, but it's, it's much closer. What I can say is that compared to the new Apple TV, there is no dramatic drops down to 30 FPS as this device doesn't get very hot. Why? Because it has a fan. Now for the first Apple TV 4K, powered by the A10X Fusion chip. Let's see how default settings go on this device. Again, on screen you can see what the default settings are on Apple TV models. This is where we start to run into bigger problems with performance. At default settings, the 30fps target is almost never seen. It will often drop down as low as 20, and even as low as 10fps during big crashes. Ouch! Handy should have made default settings have a screen scaling of low, which is a resolution of 1536 by 864. Now the game will stay at the 30fps target, with some minor dips to 29 or 26 FPS during big crashes. Much better. Bad frame pacing is still an issue, but there is legit no way to improve this. Now obviously playing at max graphics and an extreme screen scaling which is close to 4K is a very, a very stupid idea, as the game is completely unplayable. Still, I, I thought it would be fun to show what it looks like, I'm honestly kind of amazed that the A10X can even do this, can even run it like this, but yeah. Sadly, the only way to reach 60 FPS on this device is to play at the lowest settings possible. And then, you know what, it's still not even a locked 60 FPS. This is why default settings at a low screen scaling is best for this game on the A10X Fusion chip because it will provide you a mostly 30 FPS target and the game is just more playable. Wreckfest isn't very enjoyable here and I think handy games should have not supported this device or optimized it better. This is still one of the most common Apple TVs in households so people who see this game and go, oh, I, I might buy this game, it looks cool. Well, you'll be met with slightly below average performance and you might be disappointed, so keep that in mind. Finally, let's look at the Apple TV HD, powered by the very, very old A8 chip. Default settings, I've said again, are the same on all Apple TVs. You can see the settings on screen now. The game will run at 540p, as the internal resolution here is only up to 1080p on Apple TV HD. 
it doesn't even hit 20 FPS. It's really bad. <laughs> like, really bad. It's quite funny though. At extreme scaling, 1080p and max graphics, the game is really a slideshow. I thought it would be funny to show how it runs in this state because, I mean, look at it. Look how poorly it's running, it's classic. Is this really playable? It's so hard to see what's going on because the game is so blurry. I can't see anything. It's really hard to drive. It's worth noting, enabling a dynamic resolution does absolutely nothing on this device. So, yeah, the game is definitely not playable here. And I don't know why it's even downloadable. Why? Get rid of it from here. Anyway, it's kind of fun seeing how the game runs on this very, very, very old and weak device. But yeah, if you have a HD model, stay far away from this game. Unless you want to play it for some laughs. <laughs> so, which Apple TV model is the best place to play Wreckfest on? Obviously, we can remove the Apple TV HD from the question. Also, the first Apple TV 4K has some issues and can struggle to achieve just 30 FPS. The new Apple TV 4K 3rd gen can play at higher settings more easily. Say if you want to play close to 4K, it's good for that, but only expect about 25 to 30 FPS if you use dynamic resolution at performance. Its biggest downfall though is obviously thermal throttling, so a locked 60 FPS just isn't possible and that's really annoying. So I think the Apple TV 4K 2nd Gen is actually the best place to play Wreckfest on Apple TV. Even if it can't play above 1080p well, its frame rate is much more consistent with 50 to 60 FPS instead of like 30 to 60 FPS on the latest model. So yeah, I, 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 I would play it there. So what do you think of Wreckfest on Apple TV? Are you impressed or disappointed? by this port. Do you even play games on Apple TV? Do you even have an Apple TV? If you do, will you try out Wreckfest on it? Overall, the optimization here clearly isn't perfect across the board. That being said, I'd still say it's much better than the Switch version on all Apple TV 4Ks, and the newest Apple TV is almost on par with the PS4 Pro version of the game. I, I imagine if it had a fan, it would be much better. It's really insane performance for such small devices. Apple have one of the most underrated little gaming boxes in their hands, and, but I don't think it's in their intention to advertise it as a, as a gaming device. And they're idiots. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple Gaming related. My name is Chewie and thanks for watching.